The Storm Monster by Gina Stewart Peter lay in his bed in the little room under the eaves at the top of the house. He should have been fast asleep by now, but something had woken him up. He listened for a while and heard the sound of the waves beginning to crash and pound on the beach close to his home. And a moaning and a creaking as the tall pines in the forest swayed in the wind. Peter's heart began to beat a little faster. He didn't know whether to feel excited or scared, but he knew for certain that somewhere out at sea a tremendous storm was brewing and that it was moving in the direction of his home. All night the tempest raged, thundering and buffeting against the house as though it meant to tear it down stone by stone. At last, when it was almost morning, the wind dropped, giving way to a gray, cloudy, rainy day. There will be lots of things blown in on the tide, said Peter at breakfast time. Please, may I go to the beach and see? All right, Peter, said his mother with a smile. So Peter put on his anorak and Wellington boots and ran down the stony path to the beach. Wow! he said as he reached the sand. He had never seen the beach looking like this before. Everywhere he looked there was driftwood and seaweed, bottles and plastic containers, wooden planks, and... and Peter couldn't believe his eyes. There, lying upside down near some rocks, was a green wooden rowing boat. Oh, thank you, Storm, said Peter. It's just what I've always wanted. Peter ran across the sand towards the little boat. He was just pulling some of the strands of seaweed away from the hull when a dreadful groan stopped him in his tracks. Help, the groan seemed to say. Please help me. Peter realized that the sound was coming from underneath the boat. Although the voice was saying words that Peter understood, it wasn't like a human voice, but deep and gargly and rather frightening. Peter was about to run back to fetch his father when the strange voice spoke again. Please don't go, it said. I can't breathe and I'm dying of thirst. Gathering all his strength together, Peter started tagging and heaving at the boat. But all he could do was lift one side enough to prop a small rock underneath the edge so that air could get in. That, that's a little better, gasped the voice. Thank you. That's all right, said Peter, and he knelt down by the boat and peered underneath. It took a moment for his eyes to get used to the darkness, but when they did, he jumped back in terror. For underneath the boat was a monster, a huge creature with a great round head and enormous sad eyes. Please, could you get me some water? It said unhappily. My throat's full of sand. Peter ran off along the beach and soon found a plastic box with rainwater in it. Carefully, he picked up the container and went back to the boat. As he passed the plastic box under the edge, two strange long arms shot out and grabbed it. There was a long gurgling noise, followed almost immediately by a violent spitting sound. <laughs> what are you trying to do? said the creature under the boat. Poison me? 
Why? What do you mean? asked Peter. This is fresh water, cried the monster in disgust. Oh, I see, said Peter, quickly refilling the box from a nearby rock pool. Is this what you wanted? While the creature drank several containers of salt water, one after the other, Peter sat and stared at it, wondering how it came to be there. As if reading his thoughts, the monster said, My home is at the bottom of the farthest ocean, but I was caught on the surface when that terrible storm blew up last night. Of course, once I was in shallow water, I couldn't swim, and then a tremendous wave swept me up to the top of the beach. And just when I thought I'd found a boat to float myself back to sea in, it toppled over on top of me, and here I am, trapped. Normally I could shift a boat this size in a twinkling, but at the moment I feel rather weak. Can I get you anything to eat? asked Peter. What have you got? said the monster quickly. Well, Peter peered into the rock pool. There's seaweed or limpets or starfish or shrimps. That will do, said the monster. Which one? asked Peter. All of them, of course, said the monster hungrily. And make sure the seaweed isn't all dry and nasty. It was easy catching the little creatures in the rock pool and soon the monster was crunching away happily. And while I'm eating, said the monster with its mouth full, you can think of a way to get me out of here. I am thinking, said Peter, and I've got an idea. Tonight is the highest tide of the year, he went on, and I'll be back then. But first, you should have a rest and get your strength back. Some hours later, when it was quite dark outside, and his parents were fast asleep, Peter crept down the stairs of his house and ran down the rocky path to the beach. Hello, monster, he said as he reached the boat. You'll be pleased to hear, said the monster, that I've managed to roll onto my back and I can now move my legs a little. Perhaps together we can move this boat. At first, Peter and the monster tried to lift the boat, but nothing happened. Then on the third attempt, the monster, still lying on his back, gave a mighty heave. One side of the boat rose up in the air, then wobbled a little, and then fell right way up with a plop onto the sand. There before Peter stood the strangest creature he had ever seen. It was blue and green, the color of the deepest oceans, with long hair that hung like seaweed down its back. Around its head was a crown of pearly shells, and its wrists and ankles were hung with limpets and periwinkles and tiny shiny pebbles. Now help me get in, said the monster, clumbering into the little boat. Moments later, when the water was already lapping around Peter's feet, the sea monster was safely on board. There aren't any oars! cried Peter in dismay, but it didn't matter. The monster spread its great long arms to their full weed, and as the water lifted the boat off the sand, began paddling its way out to sea. Thank you! It shouted as it vanished from sight. Thank you, my friend! Next morning dawn blew, sunny and still, Peter awoke feeling sad. He knew that by now the monster would have reached deep water and would have swum down its home at the bottom of the ocean. He would never see his new friend again. But when he went down the stony path to the beach later that day, a marvelous sight greeted him. There, tied to a rock by a piece of seaweed, was the green rowing boat in which the monster had paddled away the night before and inside was a brand new pair of oars.